So T1 have snuck into Worlds by the skin of their teeth, so I'm going to go over the Game 5 draft from their series versus KT Rolster this morning. Absolute banger series. If you didn't get a chance to watch it, please go check out the highlights on YouTube. Super, super entertaining five-game banger. Uh, but T1 was able to pull it out nonetheless and sneak into Worlds as the fourth seed from the LCK. So jumping in, they go in first pick Yone. I think this is actually pretty good. Normally, I'm not a fan of blind picking solo lane so early, but the thing about Yone is that He's a mid-top flex, even though he's mostly mid lane right now. The reason he's mostly mid lane is because he's really good into range matchups and marksman specifically, which is super meta and mid. Uh, he also obviously scales really, really well, and he just doesn't really have a lot of bad matchups. So a, a lot of his counters aren't really meta picks that pro players aren't going to pick. So it's not really any, any harm to blind pick this champion really, really strong in the current meta. Uh, KT then, I think, automatically just blunt, blunder right off the bat. They pick Sejuani and Misfortune 1 2. The Sejuani is purely just a takeaway pick from T1 because they don't want them to have the Yone uh, Sejuani combo to build up the E passive for Sejuani with the melee attacks. Obviously, Yone Sej would be a really strong 1 2 jung mid jungle combo, especially level 6. Uh, but then you, they go ahead, by doing this, they go ahead and give over Lilia to T T1, which I would argue is a much stronger mid jungle duo at the level 6 mark and moving forward. A, a ridiculous scaling in that mid jungle, so already T1 is really ahead. And then KT Blunder again because they picked Sejuani, so they feel pressured to pick some kind of champion that synergizes with her, so they're pressured into picking Camille, blind pick in top lane, when they already have R5 to counter pick. And you can see that uh, KT have pit blind picked uh, AD and they blind picked top lane, so they're gonna be using R5 for a counter pick on a position that they've seen from the beginning of the draft. Technically Yone's a, a yes, technically Yone's a flex pick, but he's 99.9% .9 going mid lane because that's just what pro teams do now. So they should have KT should have just picked mid on R3 and then saved R5 for top lane counter pick like normal. That should just be how it is. But KT through the first phase have really blundered. The misfortune is their one high point. Uh, the Camille's gonna get hard punished with a counter pick and the Sejuani is gonna have minimal value. Compare that to T1's mid jungle. It's just probably the two most powerful champions you can have, honestly, uh, maybe aside from Corky, but Yone is really strong. And then the Jin I don't love. Uh, it doesn't do great into the Misfortune, and it could kind of get destroyed by the dive of Sejuani Camille. Uh, I think there's a lot of better champions available, like Ezreal, um, you know, there's plenty of ADCs open that are just flat out better champions than Jin, but it's game five. Gimuyushi probably just wanted a comfort pick. It's not the end of the world. It's a fine champion. It's just not the best that was available. KT looks like they're going to go ahead and R4 Alistar, and there's the lock in on R4. Uh, this just doesn't really make any sense. Uh, Misfortune Alistar can do some things in the lane, but Alistar's just not a very great champion uh, in general. And so I think that's. KT have just completely messed up this draft. Um, you know, Misfortune, I think, is a champion that really needs to be built around in terms of comp identity to really get value out of this champion. Her bullet time is so powerful, but it's not nearly as powerful when the enemy team can just walk out of it. You really want to draft stuff that has hard AoE lockdown so you can set up really well for the bullet time and get a big team fight wombo combo. Things like a Mumu and Jarvan work really, really well there. T1 going round out with Corky and Leona. So I was, I stand corrected, Yone is going to be flexed into the top lane, so it's going to be the Yone Camille matchup. I don't know how that one goes, but I'm, I'm sure Yone can do just fine. The side lane is going to be pretty skill based. And then the Corky was left open through all 10 bands, so Faker's going to go ahead and take that one. The Leona as well provides some nice front line and engage for the squad. So T1 honestly has a really well rounded comp, pretty basic front to back, really hard scaling team fight comp. And then with the LeBlanc on R5 for KT Rolster, uh, it's pretty much just doomed in draft. Um, even if the LeBlanc gets ahead, which I'm pretty sure it did this game, it's just going to end up getting outscaled, and she really doesn't have any one-shot potential. Maybe on the Jin she could find a pick or a chunk here and there, but the LeBlanc and Assassins in general, as I continue to say on this channel, Assassins just don't have a place in competitive, so the KT's whole comp is really just random. It has no synergy, it has no coordination. Uh, the Camille's random, the LeBlanc's random, the Sejuani's not really going to have any value, and the Le Misfortune doesn't have adequate lockdown to get value out of her so really big draft win for game five in uh, for T1 in game five rather no question they won this game um, and congratulations to T1 for sneaking into worlds hopefully they can get their crap together and maybe do some things at worlds thanks for watching see you next time